the person got his money, but you try to live like it. And then right. they're all talking about the stock market and how to make money and how to create wealth. Wealth is money that you don't need to support your lifestyle. You just never spend your budget. Your wealth just grow and grow and grow. You understand? Because I mean, it seems people, to me that seems to me the true wealth is wealth that you can pass on. Because like I said, you know, oh, you're def- definitely you're living life um, and doing well, and hopefully you'll be with us many many decades from now. But you can definitely pass it on to your kids and. We were yeah, talking earlier yeah. today about Aretha, and one of the things they said about Aretha is that she had accumulated millions of dollars that she is now able to pass on to her sons and people that uh, because she made sound business decisions while she was yeah. getting those record deals. So a lot of times yeah. wealth is something that you can pass on to those that are coming on behind you. Absolutely. You don't need it to support your lifestyle because you don't spend your budget. You <laughs> So you keep accumulating, accumulating. Okay? I have a formula, and uh, it's for me and my family to support my lifestyle. I don't give a damn what the other person got. Okay? I don't have to move the whole thing. You move there if you want to. I like the way I am. I don't need people to make me feel good. You got to have that from inward. You feel good in your skin. I don't care what people say. I know a lot of people don't like me, but I don't see that that's my problem. You yeah, and a lot of people don't like a lot of folks, but apparently yeah. folks sometimes get too right. caught up in like, whether people like them or not. They don't like Jesus. So that's okay. I don't care if you don't like me. Okay. I was doing all right before I met you. And, uh, right, and I just, but I think a lot of people get caught up with wanting people, wanting the masses to like them. They want to be liked by millions, even though those millions might not be helping them at all in the bigger cause of things in terms of making money and being successful. My nieces and nephews, they know that. And the question is, would I rather be liked or right? Hmm. I told them that I'm, I'm not in this. I don't care. I'd rather be right. No, I'm not a comedian and do all that kind of thing, sing and dance to make you happy, to uh, make you like me. I don't care. Right. That ain't my mission, okay? Um, um, I just hate to see people suffer, and I hate to see people be in a massive disagreement. And uh, I just don't like, I don't like ignorant people. And broke people. Yeah, well, people are often the most broke people. Yeah, I, you know, and uh, how, how does one, how, you know, how does one fail in America? Come on now. You've got to do something contrary to the law. So, you know, you, we have a chance to hear people say that, that um, they can't figure out why the minority community is failing as much as they claim it is failing. Um, what what do you say to those people who try to want to make it a racial thing about our failure? Because I know a lot of successful African-American business owners, yourself included, but sometimes folks try to want to make it a thing about we haven't learned the lessons of business, and therefore that's the reason that we fail. No, if you don't finish high school, I can guarantee you, you're going to catch hell. Just as simple as that. And you, and you do it one grade per year. And if you do that at the right time, see, a lot of people want to, you see, from, I guess for me and you, two plus two equals four. I don't care what it is. Right. I've had people to tell me that in some cases, two plus two equals five. No, I that's never like that. Two plus two is four. Huh? How do they make sense of two plus two being five? I don't understand that new math. No, I, le- I leave them alone. I don't, I don't waste my time with them. <laughs> and for you and I, things move in an orderly fashion. And for one to ten, after one, for you and I, is two and three and so forth. For some people, after one is five, nine, two, eight. 
Well, I can guarantee you, that's what you call random selection. Mm-hmm. And they live their lives that way. When they were 17, they want to they want to be 25. And now when they get 40, you got to come back and fill in 18. And now you look stupid. Because things flow in an orderly fashion. One, two, three, four, five. And then you can repeat it. Just that simple. And if, if um, I'm, my theory is I'm a pancake man. And for me, and I ain't got no problem with it, the pancake has two sides. I've had some people to tell me the pancake has three sides. Well, I listen to them, but I don't follow them up because I ain't got time to waste on that. Pancake, keep it simple. That two sides, and if you put raisin in the batter and put the batter in the, in the pan, I guarantee you, if you like raisins, you will not have equal amount of raisin on each side. So you right. might be, if, if you like raisin, you might be looking at the wrong side. Flip your pancake. You can always flip it back. Some people live a lifetime and they never flip their pancake. Then they're looking at the worst looking side. That mm. is so sad. Flip it. Fool, you can always flip it back. And almost everything you do, let's call it the pancake. Are you looking at the best looking side? Are you looking at the worst side that looks degrading or what have you? Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. You might be looking at the wrong side. And you might be looking at the wrong side. You flip it, you flip it right back, and nobody looking. You ain't got to do like the pizza man. You ain't got to go up in the sky with it. Flip it. It's in the wrist. Roger Brown will flip that pancake in a New York minute. <laughs> wow. Yeah, definitely. A lot of folks are not understanding the basics of business and the basics of even what's going on in our farming and things of that nature. But it uh, looks like you are definitely uh, one that folks should listen to on a regular basis. Um, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, how would they get in touch with you in terms of uh, they wanted to learn some of these lessons that you have taught to so many people, myself included. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you and have this conversation on a further way, is there an email that they can reach you at or a telephone number? And also how would one get that book of yours? Here's my email, and I'll spell it out. R M R S at gmail dot com. That's Roger Mr. Shoe at gmail dot com. All right. And uh, if uh, folks here wanted to learn about that book, I know the book was published years ago, but they wanted to get a copy of that book, can they find it on Amazon or there, or, or they just need to email you to find a way to get in touch with you to get copies of that book, which has got all this yeah, basic and, advice yeah. and everything. In the meantime, I'm going to have some more. And, 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 and Mark, you, you know what you're going to do? We're going to start up a simple get-together with a bunch of entrepreneurs, uh, small town, whether they're active or want to become one. And I'm going to start having these fish fries at least once a month. And when we come, when we come, we ain't going to be talking about no game and shoes and cars. We're going to be talking about what we can learn from each other to better our lives. Okay? And then we're going to keep, good. Things, keep, we're going to keep things simple. And then we're going to have somebody there to take pictures. And then we're going to have somebody to write it up in a little newsletter so we can share with each other what happened and get to know each other, create some action. All right? Sounds good. I definitely look forward to it, and we'll continue this conversation. And definitely, hopefully, more people have been listening and will learn and reach out to you and uh, learn some of this great wisdom that you have and everything. So I think I'm going to have a uh, um, – Mr. Uh, Dean put on some music, and I'm going to reach out to this couple of other folks who will be calling on the show <laughs> as well. Dean, you still there with me? 
I'm still here. Mr. Brown, I got a quick question for you. Is the the lodge that you are created, is it a Masonic lodge, my brother? Okay, the what? You said you were converting yeah, part of your land into a lodge. Would that be a Masonic lodge? No, no, no. This is my brother's house that we converted. He doesn't live in it anymore. Okay. Okay. So it's like a little turn into like a bed and breakfast. No, no, no. We we gotta we gotta take that and then if necessary, what we will do later on is to develop some little cottages. Okay. Okay. All right. Rather than to we gotta go we will go rustic, rustic rather oh, okay. than. Okay. We go backwards. Mm-hmm. People don't want it. the people we deal with got money and they just want an experience, a destination. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. And um, um, they're used to the other stuff that we seek, and they want what we left. Mm-hmm. I told you, you know, it's a flip flop. We want what they got. They want what we had. Right. All right. And now life is complete. Okay. I guess. All right, life is complete. If you got that money, you could do the zigzag. Have you ever been to South Carolina? I have. I come down there to Monk's Corner once a year to thank you. Okay, okay. All right, I'm further down in the booty. You can only go okay. to my place by, you can only go there by invitation. You don't have to uh, go to my, my my farm. You got to be go there by invitation. How would, how would you notify it? <laughs> and one day, well, one of these days, we're going to plan a trip down there early spring so that a lot of you people that don't know what's happening and in the Charleston Hilton Head area, there's a lot of history there. And you mm-hmm. need to know. You need to know. Um, so when Trump finished with you, you know how to run back where you came from. Right. Did you get that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I got you. Hey, too. All right. We want to be waiting on it rather than for him to be running us. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, guys. Yeah, we appreciate you now. All right. Appreciate you. Play, and let's stay in touch. Go to my email. We'll definitely, we'll definitely do that. All right. Thank you, Mark. No problem. Appreciate you. Uh, so if you put on some music, I'm going to actually reach out to the, uh, I was hoping to hear from them as well, the National Black Farmers Association. So I'm go call their number and see if I can't find out where they are. And if not, I'll just come back and give a little bit of history about them, and we'll have them back on a, another show. But I'm going to try to see if I can't reach out to these fine folks. But uh, if you'll scroll on something for about a minute or two, and then I'll be right back and see what's going on with them and Black Cotton. If not, we'll just do a little bit of reading um, and to give a little history of back history and We'll bring them back later, depending on what I find out. Okay, what I'm going to do is play uh, this one called Catch This Two from Kobe Watkins. He was a guest of ours a few weeks ago. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that on. It's straight talk with Dean and Mark, ladies and gentlemen. You can give us a call. Join in the conversation or start a conversation of your own. 646-668-8393. 